హలో వెల్కమ్ టు ఎన్పిటిఎల్ ఎన్ఓసి అండ్ ఇంట్రొడక్టరీ కోర్స్ ఆన్ పాయింట్స్ ఆఫ్ టెక్నాలజీ పార్ట్ టూ టుడే వి షెల్ బిగిన్ అవర్ స్టడీ విత్ ప్రిన్సిపల్ ఆఫ్ ట్రాన్స్పైనాట్ ఇండక్షన్ యాజ్ ఎ శాంపల్ వీ విల్ ఆల్సో ఎంప్లాయ్ దిస్ వన్ అండ్ ప్రూవ్ టిక్నాస్ థేరమ్ ఆఫ్ కోర్స్ వీ హూ టిక్నాస్ థేరమ్ ఎల్స్ వేర్ సో దాట్ ఈస్ ఎ గుడ్ వే ఆఫ్ లర్నింగ్ ఎ న్యూ టూల్ సో టెస్ట్ ఇట్ ఆన్ సంథింగ్ విచ్ యూ ఆల్రెడీ నో వేర్ ఇట్ వర్క్స్ ఓకే సో ద ప్రిన్సిపల్ ఆఫ్ ట్రాన్స్పైనట్ ఇండక్షన్ ఫేస్ ద ఫాలోయింగ్ స్టార్ట్ విత్ ఎ వెల్ ఆర్డర్డ్ సెట్ విత్ ఎ లీస్ట్ ఎలిమెంట్ we will denote it as zero this is for a convenience suppose p alpha is a statement about alpha inside x and we use the symbol p suffix a to denote that p alpha holds for all points alpha inside a a is a subset now suppose p0 is true and for any alpha inside x p0 alpha this is the segment consisting of all beta which is less than alpha inside x so p of 0 alpha implies p alpha holds remember this means that p of beta is true for all beta less than alpha that is the meaning of p0 alpha then p alpha holds if this is the case then the principle of transfinite induction concludes that px is true that is for all for all uh, you know elements of x the statement will be true suppose on the contrary px is not true what does that mean this just means that if you take elements inside x for which the statement is not true that is a non empty subset this b is a non empty subset okay a non empty subset in a well ordered uh, set has a minimum okay an infimum alpha and alpha is inside this one that is why we can call it as minimum since p0 is true in the beginning i assume p0 is true and this implies this one right so p0 is always true that means this alpha which is the minimum is not equal to zero and moment is smaller than that it must be true otherwise alpha will not be mini infima so p of zero alpha this is true every beta less than alpha p of beta is true that is the meaning of this therefore p alpha is true okay that means what close if you can take, here you can take the closed uh, segment 0 to alpha okay but then th- then what then alpha cannot be inside b that is a contradiction oh so that is the proof of principle of transfinite induction which is as you see is an easy consequence of well ordering okay so that is the whole idea so which in a well ordered thing this always holds the point is you are already very very familiar with the principle of mathematical induction that is a special case of this when x is the natural numbers along with the usual order of course that is a well ordered okay 
So, this principle of transfinite induction is a far far generalization of mathematical induction. This is true for any x. As soon as you have a well order there, you can use it like this. So, our next aim is to illustrate the use of principle of transfine induction with one single example, but that example is going to be something very very important namely product of arbitrary non empty families of compact spaces is compact. Okay, that is a Tikhonov's theorem. We have proved we have given several proofs of that. Now we will give another proof of that one here. Okay. So this is again you know here I am going to use one of the theorems that we prove in part 1. I would not have time to do that again here, but I will recall it for ready reference. This is the theorem that we proved in part 1. Let x be any topological space, then the following two conditions are equivalent. The first condition says that for every topological space z, the projection map z cross x to z is a closed map. The second condition is x is compact. So, this theorem gives you a characterization of compact spaces. So, what we are going to do is employ this one both ways in proving that Cartesian product of compact spaces is compact. Of course, you have to take non empty product and non empty. <laughs> if you take empty product, it is, is assumed to be a singleton or some system, there is no problem, but each space must be non, non empty, that is important. Every non empty product of compact spaces is compact. Okay. <coughs> So, the proof seems to be just a small trick and using the principle of transfinite induction correctly, which amounts to more or less, you know, selecting appropriate uh, notation here. Otherwise, it is extremely easy proof. So, I will tell you the idea and then tell you how it works in simple cases, rest of them is just pure notations and so on. Okay. So, given an index family of compact spaces, we want to prove that x prime is a, which is a product of each x i, i inside i prime is compact. The plan is to show that for any topological space z, the projection map z cross x prime to z away from x prime okay, to the first factor. This is a closed map and use the previous theorem. To prove this itself, we will use the principle of transfinite induction. So, here is the first step which will tell you what kind of tricks we have to do with uh, employing principle of transfinite induction put a well order on the set that is important set namely the indexing set i prime. Let us denote the least element there by 1. Okay, 1 belonging to i prime is the least element. Take any order, no problem. It must be well order, that is all. Extend this to a well order of i which is disjoint union of i prime with the two extra elements I will denoting by 0 and infinity. By declaring that every element in I prime is between 0 and infinity. In other words, now 0 is the least element and infinity is the greatest element. There may be a least element here that is that's always there that, and that element I have written at 1, but there may not be any greatest element. 
so i have put an a greatest element also okay so this is the first trick you can say clearly zero becomes the least element and infinity becomes the greatest element inside this uh, i which is two extra elements from i prime uh, sir ha huh. in the first line we hmm. are using the well ordering principle right for i Find prime well order i prime yeah and now on i you have defined a order yeah it will it may not remain the well order set it is a well order set take a subset if it contains 0 0 is fine if it does not contain it will be inside if it may be containing infinity does not matter infinity is the largest it cannot be smallest if we throw away infinity also there will be a smallest element there and because i prime was well ordered yeah well ordered we have uh, we have even in the uh, proof of you know using john's lemma proof of that one we have extended this one and so on this is so so the extensions of ordering for one element two element three elements in finite dimensional elements is obvious Okay, uh, uh, wherever there is infinitely many, then you need. We have to go back to John's lemma. You have to go back to uh, principle itself, ordering. In other words, what your objection may be that suppose I prime is well ordered, and I prime is contained inside a larger set J, J prime. Will there be a well order on J prime, which extends the well order on I prime? Even that is true. okay so but we have not proved such a thing we can the whatever proof we have given for existence of well order you can modify it to prove such a thing also okay so that is not of any use for us i am just i am going to two elements i prefer i want it this way not an arbitrary order okay zero is the least element and i is the infinity is the largest element in fact we want to work inside i prime only but these two things help us in putting the correct notation you know instead of getting instead of uh, buggy notations that's all okay now for each j inside i let us denote the the segment 0 j which means all elements strictly um, between 0 and j including 0 and j so this i will denote by capital j note that zero infinity is nothing but the whole space i okay now another small trick i want to prove that for arbitrary space z z cross x prime to x prime where x prime is a product that is z cross x prime to z sorry is the projection map is a closed map right so i want to change the notation here put z equal to x not now and x infinity i choose another space namely a singleton u which is a harmless thing okay <laughs> it's anyway compact this is not compact and is not supposed to be compact anyway okay now to take x to be product of all these x size remember if i only take i prime then this x prime that is what we wanted to prove is compact proving one more factor cross with the singleton is compact is same thing as proving the original thing is compact so what we are going to prove is now x prime cross x infinity which is a single singleton that is compact okay some more notation for any subset a of i let x suffix a denote the product of xi where i reigns over a itself for each pair of subsets a contained inside b contained inside i inclusion equality allowed okay let pi b a denote the projection map from x b is b is a larger thing to x a 
which just means that drop out all the indices which are not in A. That is the projection map, right? One more simpler notation, pi of i to A will be just denoted by pi A. When the, the top thing is the full thing, you just write it as pi A. So, that is from the whole space x to x A. Okay, these are all projection maps. Note that with this notation, x i, what is x i? It is x. Okay. And pi i is the identity map. Nothing is dropped out. All right. One more notation. Pi naught is what? It's just projection to the x naught coordinate. All right. We want to show that this is a closed map. Since x naught is arbitrary, this will prove that x prime cross x infinity which is singleton is compact. Now, that is the same thing as proving the x prime is compact. Okay, so, this is what we want to prove. So, that will prove that x prime cross infinity is compact and x prime is compact. Okay. Now, the next step is, so start with a closed subset of x. Okay, you have to prove that the image is a closed set. So, take a point in the closure and show that it is inside the original set pi naught of f. You want to show that this is closed. So, this is equal to the closure. So, I, have t I will take a point in the closure and show that it is inside that is all all right now suppose you have just two two spaces say x is just z cross some x1 okay then how do you have done this one x x projection map is compact Okay, so the second factor is compact, projection map is closed, is what you had proved, right? So, this would have been done. Similarly, for finitely many cases, we have already done the product is compact and so on. But if you do not use it, how you do that? You just reflect what you have to do, okay, successively. First, you get a point in pi 1, first, first projection, say, for, for there are three. X, x, uh, x is z cross x1 cross x2 cross x3, let us say. So, you have started with a point in x x naught, which is z, right. So, which is inside the closure, take a point x naught comma x1, okay, inside pi 1 of f closure. The projection of that one to pi naught will be pi the same thing as this one. Next, take a point x naught, x1, x2 in pi to pi 1, 2, 1 and 2, or both of them, pi 1, 2, 3, etc. So, when you take all the indexes, it is the same thing as identity map, which is pi of, which is just pi i of f is just the same thing as f. f bar is f because start with a closed set. Okay? So, you would have hit this one. Namely, you would have proved this one. Of course, this is a different proof I am giving you. We already know that product finitely many of them are, uh, are uh, compact. So, this would have been another proof in the case of uh, when uh, product you have taken over a finite family. Right? So, once you have this idea, okay, now everything is just a set of notations and finally applying the transfinite induction okay i think that makes the idea clear in the in the proof what is going on all right so start with a point x suffix uh, top x naught because i would like to use the the lower suffix for the coordinates okay this is some point in pi naught of f bar bar denoting the closure. Okay. So, for each j inside i, I will make a statement here S j, 
S J denotes the statement that there exists some x suffix j belonging to x j such that the x j is actually inside pi j f bar. Okay, you have to start with f which is in the product space x, project it to this x j and take its closure. So, this element must be in this closure. Then it must also satisfy that all its projection, see j prime's projection of this one agrees with x j prime. So, this is an inductive or inductively you know, x j prime denotes an element here with this property. Okay? So, it must be true for x j prime also here. x j prime belongs to pi j prime of that one. That is the inductive statement, one single statement meaning all these. Okay? So, the jth projection of this one must be the same thing as the j prime projection uh, element here which just means that if you take the j uh, say ith projection of x j where i is less than little j then it must be same thing as ith projection of this element where i is actually smaller than even j prime that is the meaning of this the projection map projection of these these uh, the points which you are choosing next one should be the same thing as the, the points which you have chosen already. Okay. So, this is what I did in the case of you know in the illustration case. First you choose x naught and then x naught comma x1 and then x naught comma x1 comma x2. So, that kind of notation is not possible that is what I have tried like this that is what. So, this will be true for every j prime inside 0 to j this statement makes sense even when j j prime is 0 there is no problem that x naught has been already chosen so we know this statement is true otherwise it is just a statement now why i am making this statement examine the statement okay for s infinity what is the meaning of the statement as s infinity? That means there is a point x suffix infinity inside x this this infinity will be now meaning uh, 0 to infinity which is just whole space I have told you. So, x infinity will be inside x such that x infinity is inside pi infinity of f which is again f bar but f bar is f. So, x infinity is inside f and this one means that in particular pi naught of this x infinity is x naught. Okay. So, what does that mean? That means this point this is in, in the closure, but it is actually inside f. So, we have shown that this x naught is inside pi naught of f. Right? So, that will complete the proof. So, that is the idea of making this statement. This statement for j equal to infinity is the one which we want finally. What is the starting point? The starting point will be S1 for example. S0 is too obvious, S1 we can prove. Then we have to prove that Sj for all j by what? obvious tricks namely suppose this is true then next one is true that step I have to prove that is the hardest step here ok alright. So, let us prove S1 ok this is where the induction begins what is X1 X1 is a compact space X0 is Z x naught cross x 1 to x naught is a closed map because x 1 is compact. Therefore, if you take pi 0 1 this I could have written as the you know square bracket also here no problem both of them are the same there is nothing else between 0 and 1 by the way. So, pi 0 1 f take the closure 
P of that, P is next projection, the projection projection, okay. That will be a closed map because this is a closed set I am taking. So, P of that one will be a closed subset of Z equal to X naught and contains this uh, subset, right, P of pi of F, but that is pi naught of F. Therefore, it contains pi naught of F bar because it is a closed subset but it contains x naught. Okay. This means that you have an x 1 inside x 1 such that this x naught x 1 belongs to pi naught bar. This proves s 1. So, this is why I have, I have explained it already before. Now, I am using this uh, new notation I have explained it. So, this is the way from x 1 to x 2, x 3 and so on we can go um, keep going very easily. All right, but now we want to use uh, induction directly. So S one is true. Now next thing to prove that suppose for some k inside i, okay, not equal to zero. This should be zero. This is not O. S j is true for all j less than k. All right we want to prove that S k is true. Why? Once we prove this that S j for all j less than k implies S k is true, the condition for transfinite induction is over. That will, that will prove that S infinity is true. So, all that we have to do is S k is true. Okay. Define y belong to 0 to k, x 0 to k, product up till taken up to 0 k over 1 to be the element such that this y j th coordinate, th coordinate of y is the j th coordinate of this x j for every j less than k. Then it follows that this y j which is nothing but the projection pi j of 0 k. See, j, j is something smaller than k, right? For each j you have, for each j less than k, capital J pi j 0 k to this one of y is x j. All that you have to verify is take the ith coordinate here and ith coordinate here for i less than equal to j, then these are, these are the same because I have just projection maps there. Okay. So, that is what I have done here for to begin with if you take j little j th coordinate of y j that is y j that is the same thing as the j th coordinate of x power j provided j prime is less than j. Okay. I should j prime here. Then from 34 this property okay, what, what we get? with pi j j prime of x j is x j prime. So, this implies the j th prime coordinate of x j is equal to j th prime coordinate of this one also okay, for all of them. So, that means that j th prime coordinate of y itself is equal to the j th prime coordinate of x power j. Okay. So, I have defined what y should be. This y will be in pi, in pi of 0 k operating upon f, the closure of that. So, all this is happening inside x 0 k. Okay. So, we have to prove this one. We have got a y which projects correctly, but why it is in the closure? So, this is where something has to be used from the product topology. What is that? The definition of product topology. That is what we are going to use. Let W be a neighborhood of Y okay, in the product topology. What does that mean? There exists a finite set I contained inside, A contained inside I and an open subset V contained inside X A 
A is a finite set, okay, such that y is inside v cross this x taken all the indices in the complement of a okay so that is the uh, basic uh, neighborhood uh, sub basic neighborhood so there will be some such neighborhood contained inside v contained inside w okay choose j to be the maximum of a a is a finite set okay that is why maximum will exist and put u equal to v cross x b contained inside x j okay now all the elements in, in a, where b is 0 to j i have taken full okay which are not inside a of course Okay, so we want to be uh, inside this finite set, but in between there may be something. So you take take j to be the maximum of a and put u equal to v cross x b. See, the v is inside purely inside a. So I am taking zero to j, which is the larger set. Then I take this open subset inside x j. Then we automatically get y belonging to u cross what is this one j complement is only 0 k minus 0 j 0 j part will be coming from u okay other things are here which are full spaces x j okay so this is anyway subspace of that one so this will be also contained inside them all right so we have got a neighborhood like this for each point y for, for, for each neighborhood w of y you have get a, such a neighborhood these are basic neighborhoods therefore what happens what is the meaning of this one if you take the jth projection of w for w is inside x 0 k right that contains this subset this subset contains inside w so the projection will contain that one the jth projection will contain u cross x j. What is the jth projection of this one? All these things will do go away. So it is just u. And u uh, contains the jth projection of y. Okay, that is how we have chosen that. First, we choose only finitely many elements. Afterwards, we allow the rest of them to be free so that the y will come inside that. Okay, so this y is now inside u. So that is the whole idea here. But this is nothing but xj. Okay. From 35, oh, we have to use this, right? Because once j is there, y is chosen such that its jth projection is xj. Here we have chosen. Jth projection is xj for various. Okay, so from 34 we know that this xj is inside pi j f bar and u is open in xj, it follows that u intersection pi j of f is non-empty. So this implies u intersection xj complement that is non-empty, uh, intersection with pi j inverse of uh, the, the projection map here pi 0 j to x is non-empty. But that is contained is a W intersection, the the projection of f on zero to k. So for each point, you see y neighborhood of y, it intersects this one. Therefore, this must be in the closure of this. Okay. So this is this these notations may be new to you, but this kind of thing you have proved while proving uh, product is connected, etc. So similar argument. There is no, this is not new to you. The next step is similar to S1. What is that? We have yet to prove that you know this implies the next one. So that is what. Now consider the projection pi zero k. Okay namely for full 
one more element this one more element is there right so capital k is 0 to k all of them so omit that one element take the projection okay we want to show that this is closed but we have to use that this is closed but that is that comes because this xk is compact right so we have to use each xk is compact after all so because xk is compact this is a closed subset here the image pi k 0 k of pi k f bar okay that is closed subset i am taking here is a closed subset of 0 k but it contains pi k of f right its projection of pi k of f is there which is nothing but pi 0 k of f and then it contains a closure therefore there exist x k belong to x k from here i can extend it to this one that is the whole one more element i can take that is the whole idea x k belong to x such that y comma x k what is the meaning of this notation now which just means that the earlier projections of this uh, element is the old y the kth projection is x k okay this is element of pi k f bar so here I am using that x k is compact. Okay, one at a time. That step is again used here. So clearly, for all j less than k, if you take the projection of this y comma x k, that will be x j. Okay, which is being same thing here projection of y. So it is a, a, a x j. Okay, so this proves the statement x k, assuming that it is true that namely for every j less than k, s k is true. That closes the transfinite induction over, the proof is over. So, this proof is worth uh, repeating quite often, you read it carefully. Uh, next thing is we want to go ahead with uh, this order topology and so on. So, how far we can imitate the the model namely the real line with its order so we go back to that and introduce a few more terminologies all based on what we know already what we are familiar with with the real line so let us recall the notation of least upper bound and greatest lower bound in the context of a totally ordered set. We are recalling it so that everything is devoid of all algebraic properties of real line. Only the order properties are being used. So, that is why we are recalling emphasis is on that. So, start with any totally ordered set. A subset A is called is, is said to be bounded above with respect to bounded below if there exists alpha belong to x such that for all a inside a we have a is less than equal to alpha or the other way around this alpha is less than equal to a okay bounded above and bounded below this alpha will be a lower bound here if this alpha is upper bound here the other way in that case alpha is called an upper bound in the other one it is lower bound okay same definition let A be bounded above and alpha be an upper bound. We say alpha is the least upper bound for all for A or another name is supremum of A. If for every upper bound beta of A, we have alpha is less than or equal to beta. That means, first of all, the set of upper bounds must be non empty then you take alpha to be the least element in the set of upper bounds for all upper bounds are bigger than alpha so then it is called a least upper bound it is very descriptive name supremum is another terminology exactly similarly you can define greatest lower bound and infimum also okay the notation will be inf a and sup a Note that we have not claimed that supremum and infimum exist. 
okay however it is easy to check that they are unique if they exist and that is where you have to use the anti symmetry property that's all in a totally ordered set the following two conditions are equivalent what is that every non empty subset a of x which is bounded above has a least upper bound in x okay that upper bound may not be an element of a in x every non empty subset b of x which is bounded below has a greatest lower bound this is just the dual of the statement but these two are equivalent so let us prove one implies two the proof of 2 implies 1 is just the other way around you know just you have to reverse the inequalities and so on right so is they are similar so 1 implies 2 if we prove when you are done okay let us prove 1 implies 2 start with a non empty subset of x which is bounded below look at all the elements x a inside x such that a is less than or equal to b for every b inside b which just means that all the lower bounds a is non empty is the assumption okay and because b is non empty <laughs> to begin with a is non empty and it is bounded above every element of b is a bound in uh, is their upper bound okay so it is bounded above also the set a itself is bounded above so let s be supremum of a which exists because x satisfies one every bounded above set has a least upper bound so that supremum is there so this is the hypothesis one now we have to conclude b right so this s is clearly less than or equal to b for all b inside b because because of what we have taken the least element here okay hence this s itself is a element here because s is less than equal to b if beta is any lower bound for b then by definition beta is inside a therefore beta is less than equal to s therefore s is the the greatest lower bound this is infimum all right so by upper bound exist and then uh, the supremum exist if the lower uh, bounded below lower bound exists is what we have low, low, uh, infimum exists what we have 2 implies 1 as i have told you is similar okay few more terminologies a totally ordered set is said to be order complete if it satisfies condition 1 and hence condition 2 because they are equivalent of the above lemma i repeat what is the meaning of ordered complete every bounded above set must have least upper bound which is same thing as saying every bounded below set has a greatest lower bound so if that exists inside this x tau x uh, partial order okay this must be first of all a totally ordered set such a thing you will call a comp order complete so you may be already knowing that this this property we have been extensively using for the real numbers right so we have made it a definition here if x is a linearly ordered finite set then it is easy to see that it is order complete right therefore order completeness axiom is relevant only when x is infinite next time we shall use all this okay and then study order topology so far we are not mentioning a topology at all okay all the time we were talking about the combinatorics of this partial ordering total ordering well ordering and so on now the topology will enter okay thank you